a second here. And I'll, I'll try to watch the time. we got about 30 minutes, and you got to head on out. Um, <clears throat> I can stick around. Don't worry about it. All right. All right. Cool, There's cool. No break, that's all. Ah, uh, yes. Very important. <laughs> I just finished mine. So, um, so Mike, where, where, where are you from, man? I'm from England. England? Now I live in California in uh, Thousand Oaks. Dang. How, how, how did you get like, from, what, from England all, all the way over to Cali? That's a long story, but it had everything to do with the newspaper. I bought a newspaper on the wrong day, on, on a Tuesday instead of on a Thursday. And uh, I found an ad in this newspaper, and that sent me off to a college that I didn't expect to go to. And while I was at the college, uh, they sent a bunch of students over here on an exchange, and they came back and told me that there was a job over here that I might be interested in. Uh, and it turned out, actually, it wasn't a job. But it was a place at uh, the um, University of Southern California uh, to do a master's. <laughs> It was great. They paid me to be a student. <laughs> that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I was there for two years. It was wonderful. That's cool. And, and did you get your formal uh, training then in England and then came over here? Or did you do all of, like, did you develop yourself as an artist over here? Well, I did a lot of set design and lighting design for theater, in fact. And I was painting alongside all of that for a long time doing, doing set design. Uh, and, uh, painting, I've been doing very seriously since, uh, I would guess, 96, something like that. Uh, that's when it started getting really, really serious. So before that, I was spending most of my time focusing on set design uh, and lighting design. I think you can see that in the paintings. That there's yeah. uh, a lot of lighting and, and uh, spatial work going on in the, in the paintings. Now, um, the, the images that we're looking at, uh, do you want to just give us the backstory on, on what they are and, uh, you know, in terms of the concept and, and then we can go a little deeper into them? Yeah, this, uh, this big image of uh, my studio is a panorama shot of the end of the studio. Uh, and you can see uh, four panels, uh, two of them on the wall on the right hand side and two of them uh, mounted onto eight foot square panels. Um, uh, they're they're all part of one installation. They're a painting I'm working on right now called The Chariot. Uh, it's really the course of the sun throughout the year. Uh, it'll change a lot between now and when it's done. I, I thought it'd be interesting to show it right now because it's a sort of middle stage of the painting. Uh, I painted an old Flemish technique called Grisé painting, and you paint everything in greys first. So all these figures are done in the first layer of grey. And then, and then you glaze on top of it? Right, I'll glaze paint over the top and bring in all the color. There's still a ways to go though. They're, they're going to be within a, um, what's called a nematon, a circular uh, sort of enclosure of, of trees uh, that'll, uh, that'll give them the space uh, which they live in, you know, they're processing it. When it's displayed, it'll be arranged in a circle. Uh, so mm -hmm. these four panels will be arranged around you and you'll be standing within this eternal procession of the girls walking uh, in this circular way. It's really the sun, of course. That's awesome, man. It, it's uh, actually Bill, the guy I was telling you about, my one of my students, um, was actually my first student about two years ago, and he did uh, a series of 13 um, images based on the uh, the horoscope. And, um, uh, and we were going to do the same thing, put all 13 in a circle, so that as you were in it, it had like an experience. Yeah, enveloped in it. I like this. I've done it before on another installation, which worked very well, and I liked it a lot. That's uh, cool. I'm going to keep going with this kind of uh, idea of paintings as an installation. That yep. It's not just something you hang on the wall. It's something more than that. You're, yep. you're with it, kind of enveloped by it. I really like this idea. Yep. I want to see how much further I can go with it. Awesome, man. That's awesome. That's uh something we, we talk a lot about at the academy is when you're composing a work of art um that it, it's there's this concept in the south called spit and image and and, and it comes from this idea of uh, meaning spirit and image and so you might say to somebody man that that boy is a spit and image of his dad or they might say a spit and image right or a spirit and image of his dad and so he looks like his dad but he also, when you're standing in the presence of the, of the son, you feel that you're in the presence of the dad, right? Yeah. Um, and, and learning how to, like, capture that in your artwork so it just doesn't 
give you the visual experience of, oh, that's what that is. But then it gives you that, that visceral experience. Like you actually feel, you know, that you're either in that piece <clears throat> where it's broadcasting something uh, beyond just what you see. And right. Right. I want the paintings to do exactly that. I, I want you to enter the world of the paintings. Like yeah. The paintings should, uh, should really catch your attention, draw you in. Uh, so that you're participating in the in the world, right? I don't think paintings that just illustrate something that really very interesting. I want them to be more than that. I want you to have an idea from the paintings and really share the idea. So the the um, the figures in here are very contemporary, um, and and so you said that they were going through the four. I think you said the four seasons, right? Um, and so. Let me ask you here, which ones, the ones over here on the, on the left? Um, yeah, the, the paintings in the studio right now are a little out of order. Uh -huh. uh, so it could be a little confusing. The first one over there on the left-hand side is actually winter, the one where the cursor is right now. Uh -huh. And uh, this one that you're at now is, uh, is summer. Uh, then this one over here uh, is uh, spring. And then this one is fall. Or autumn, if you're in Europe. <laughs> we'll put an A there just so it doesn't look like I, I graded it an F. Um, you got an A. Um, yeah, autumn is a cooler word too. The um, so then conceptually, what are you doing in terms of your ideas? Um, let, let's start with the winter one. Uh, I think I have um, a closer uh, a close up of it here. Hold on. Ooh. Yeah, this uh, this figure is uh, the that first one. There, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. the one that, she's uh, she to me, she's the the girl alone. She's the son that's been that's died and is coming back. Mm. Uh, the resurrection of the son hasn't happened yet. That's going to come in the next image. You go to the next shot. Let's say from the same panel. Yep. Uh, yeah, here we are. Uh, and in this one here, you're seeing the uh, the girls gossiping. There's this kind of slightly insidious. Uh, feeling about it. It's a bit backbiting and gossipy and a bit mean. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, uh, mean spirited sense to it. Uh, and uh, uh, that, that figure on the right in that particular shot, uh, you can see her, she's beginning to start drinking and having a party. Now, let me see here. Um, if we can, I don't think I have that image of her. Okay, so we, okay, here's a, here we can see this. Yeah, this is a study that I've worked on to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, figure out where the trees are going to go because the girls are all walking around in this circle uh, and it's a druid's nematon in, mm. fact, uh, in England that you can still find these sites so from the 19th century revival of course they're forest clearings which were planted so you'd have an open circular space uh, in which the old rituals could be practiced and uh, that, that's what I'm after with this that the girls are walking around in a circle within a nematon it's a circular sacred space uh, the trees will give you that sense of that of that environment, the world that they're, they're mm -hmm. living in. You'll also see foliage in the foreground. This is uh, not there at the moment at all. Uh, I have six more months to finish the painting. <laughs> uh, so that'll all start developing in the next few months. That's awesome. That's awesome. You mean you're not, you're not just doing this at the last minute? Oh my gosh, it has to be done in two weeks. Ah, huh? this is the last minute. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you kidding me? Six months to do all this work? Oh my God, it's nothing. This, this has taken me since April so far. The, oh, wow. Figures that are nearly done. And uh, I, I guess you could calculate <laughs> how many figures I can do in a week or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. And now the other paintings that are going to be part of this show, you still have to complete them as well? No, most of them are done. There, okay. um, there, there are four small ones and two decent sized paintings. I have a little longer uh, before I have to have them uh, finished uh, because the, uh, the paintings, first of all, go into a, a show at the Ventura Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I won't need to have all of the 22 uh, images complete uh, by then. Um, I say 22 images, although actually there's more like 30 or 40 paintings that are going to go out. Uh, uh, they, you know, the, like this image, I consider it one image, although it's four paintings. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, do, do you mind if I offer up a suggestion or a thought and then uh, 
uh, as we go through these. I'm kind of curious on, on the um, using the trees in the background. If there's a way, or if you're if you're doing it or planning it, um, <clears throat> or maybe I should just ask you: uh, are, are you are you designing or composing the trees in the background in such a way that they kind of mimic the the story of the figure? Well, the, the, generally speaking, I've placed them very carefully because I want to make you look. I'm manipulating your view, right? Mm -hmm. uh, by, by placing a darker shape behind a head, I can make you see that head more clearly. Uh, for example, there's a figure in the middle there and she's got her hand flat and she's laughing, right? Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right there. And that tree goes, uh, goes right up behind her head. Uh, and that's going to make that face pop out more from the background, which would otherwise yeah. be a light and would, uh, would, you know, her face would tend to blend a little bit more than, with the background than I would like. Uh, so I'm deliberately placing that tree right there. I've also made studies of, uh, of the, the golden section and the, the rule of thirds on these compositions too, to figure out where the major nodes are, where the, the really serious action moments are, compositionally speaking, mm -hmm. uh, and try to identify where the good spots are. Uh, and you'll, you'll notice a few uh, key uh, actions happening in, the, in some of the paintings uh, that hit those spots. So, uh, the paintings are all very manipulative. Indeed. <laughs> people all the time in, in a painting. You're telling them what to look at. Yep. Uh, these, are, these contrast tricks are one of the ways that you can do that. Uh, I'm looking, what I'm looking at right now is trying to see um, the, uh, the ground relationship. Like I noticed in here, there's almost like a little curve coming up. Yeah, don't pay too much attention to that at this stage. When I get the foliage in, that'll change dramatically. Oh, okay. I was thinking it was actually really success. Uh, it was really good because if this is where she's starting to just come into that resurrection of, of you know, I mean, it, so it kind of leads the eye up just slightly, not a lot. And then the width of here compared to over here, this is obviously greater. So it just has like this nice little gentle rising. Rise. Yeah. Which... Yeah. Um, you know, lead you make you know in that direction. Um, that's pretty cool, man. That's cool. And so over here, you have this diagonal coming through here because you want right. focus well, on I'll there. Separate the figure out on that side. Uh, I've deliberately left uh, quite a lot of space between the yeah, right there. That sort of V yep. shape. I've made that very open there, so there's some depth there to emphasize the separation of the figure on the left from the cluster of the girls there. I want her to be alienated. You exactly. Know, so She's the dead sun. She's the, the winter solstice sun. That's cool. That's cool. I like that a lot. Um, that's interesting. I'm almost thinking. It's it's. Let me let me try something here real quick just to see what it would look like. Because I like her how her belly here is is it's kind of flat. Uh oh, hold on one second. I gotta close my, all my Facebook stuff down. They're making noises. Uh, I guess I can probably just shut it all out. Let me just quit it all. There. Okay. Um, let me let me try something here real quick, if you don't mind. You see how like this is coming through here. Um, I don't know if this is working here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, I'm wondering is what if that was curved outward just a little bit. <laughs> you want to make a show in the beginning of pregnancy, huh? Well, well, well actually, maybe. <laughs> but she's not pregnant here, right? No, no. no she's no, no. really thin. I, I routinely make my figures tall and thin. Uh, but there's a, a strong theme of pregnancy in the, uh, in the painting, in fact. Uh, uh, later on in the, in the seasons, you'll see, you'll see more of the, uh, uh, the pregnant figure coming. Okay. Uh, the reason why I was uh, suggesting that maybe it bowls out just a little bit, so she doesn't look pregnant, but she, you know she still looks thin, is having basically uh, where am I here? Having this sense, like where if this is coming here and then they're coming here, then they're this energy and that energy are basically at odds, right? Yeah. Um, and so it just has like this little like that space between them is kind of pushing against each other, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, just to kind of help convey the story that, that you're telling there. 
but just having like this so right right now you can see how like this comes in and it's starting to kind of mimic and therefore now they kind of feel a little more connected where maybe if you have this one if you if you twist this one back now your eye is connecting the two so if you reverse it oops that wasn't good <laughs> okay there we are um if we reverse it like this a little bit and then mimic that that curve there now they start to feel like they're at odds that's an interesting idea yeah. that's cool i like this man i like this a lot so and then now this is the winter and then this is which one would this one be down uh, here yeah, that's uh, uh that's spring okay and obviously it isn't fully composed out um no. well in the in the actual thing i've made a lot more progress on it there are those figures on the right that were blank in the uh, in the sketch just... yep and so then we have these ladies they're having right. fun yeah. they're partying so let, let me go back to here so this is where they're partying and having fun um now there is one lady falling down here is she falling down or She's reaching towards the kid that's in the uh, in the next panel. Uh, so in the in the fall panel, there's a child that's running away. Let me see here. Right there on the uh, right, right here. Oh, you see her in that photo. Let's get over here. Ooh. Okay, so here's the the, the, the kid. See her down there on the yeah. yeah it looks really odd there. So she is falling. Yeah. yeah so she, She's reaching out to catch the kid who's running away in this uh, this fall uh, image. She is she is she capturing her innocence, her youth. Um, and it's partly that, and and partly a, a, a sense of the future running away. You know, mm. you, can't, you can't catch it ever. It's always somewhere ahead, and you can't really control it. Uh, we, we we imagine that we control our destinies, but we really don't. <laughs> <laughs> we only control the fact that we pretend that we do. Yeah, um, I, I like the way you think, man. Uh, I, I have an illustration background, and so when I look at these, and I, I was looking at your other work, and uh, the symbolism and the representation that you have in there, um, I'm like, dang, I got to talk to you because you got some deep stuff going on in those images. Well, they're they're all they're all allegorical images, and uh, so there is a lot of meaning in them. But I don't want to explain it too much to people. You know, I want people to look at the art and figure it out for themselves. That's, uh, I mean, that's the point, isn't it? Uh, I, can, I can try to shape people's consciousness uh, in my stuff, but it's up to them to allow it to be shaped, right? Mm -hmm. and, and to figure out what direction it's going to be shaped in. So my paintings tend to work on multiple levels like that. If you want to look at them just superficially, then like for example, this one, you've got a bunch of pretty girls and you can appreciate it just because there's a whole lot of pretty girls walking around wearing sundresses. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and so, uh, so there's that way of looking at it. But, but if you look a bit deeper and look a bit more closely, you start noticing that there are things going on uh, in the paintings that, that have some indication of meaning that you're meant to be thinking harder about these things. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I'm looking for the, I'm looking for the snake that you were talking about. I haven't done it yet. Oh, you haven't done it. And that, <laughs> that's in the, uh, this freak out moment is happening on the right hand side. Head over one more panel to the right. Uh, yeah, there. Right, right here. There. Oh, right here will be. This freak out going on here. Right. Yeah. I haven't done it's a bit tricky. <laughs> I really need to find a taxidermied uh, English adder uh, because it's set in England, the painting. So oh, okay. I need to have an appropriate snake. And the adder is the only poisonous snake in England. They're oh, nasty. true. Hey, so really cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought about getting a rattlesnake because I live in California. So mm -hmm. you get a rattlesnake. But it's just, it would just be completely wrong for this sort of druidic, uh, weird sort of summer kind of uh, pagan thing that's going on in the book. <laughs> um, yeah, and I am assuming that the people in that area seeing the snake, they would they would realize they would know they would they would know what what snake that was, right? Oh, sure. You know, I grew up in the English countryside, and I never saw an English uh, adder. Hmm. Never, not once. I saw a grass snake when I was a kid, but that was the only snake I ever saw. Yeah, so for about 99.999% of the people, they're going to say, oh, that's a snake biting the girl. Yeah, you won't know what it is. <laughs> to me, it's got to be right, you know. <laughs> I, I like that. The, the wrong kind of critter in there. <laughs> the raccoon. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that's cool. That's cool. So uh, in terms of the design, um, knowing that which which is which foot is uh, the snake going to bite the back you know, one? The back heel there. Design wise, right you got this very strong uh, V shape going on here. These figures on the left, like here. Uh, yeah, and they're guiding you down to the heel. All of them are looking down. You've got like seven figures here, all yeah. looking down at, the, at her heel. Uh, and uh, and the, the snake, uh, the heel is exactly in the center uh, of, the, uh, of the panel. So, oh, okay. Uh, That's interesting. You've got this very strong guiding of, uh, of uh, uh, people's, you know, uh, mm -hmm. eye to take them down to that snake. And you said these are four by eights. No, right. no, they're eight feet wide and five feet high. Oh, five by eight. Okay. Right, five by eight. Okay. That's interesting. If they're four by eight, then that would be two perfect squares, but you're going a little uh, yeah. four and a half. Yep. Um, you know, five high and eight. Okay. So they're four. Oh, hold on just a second. I'm doing this interview thing. Do you want to come back in a few minutes? Hey, sorry about that. No, no problem. No problem. So if uh, they're five high and four across, then that would basically be like almost two 16 by 20 ratios. Right. Nice. Really nice. Um, yeah, and in terms of the design, I, I see the the, um, the diagonals that you're bringing down in here, and then you're obviously bringing them up through here as well to get that attention on there. And then are you intentionally then bringing the eye back around? Um, um, not, not particularly. I, I, I really like the hand structure here. You've got four hands that make a cross in this particular image. Do you have a shot of that? Uh, let me see. Do, 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 do. Uh, uh, nope. Well, you don't have it in that one. I, didn't, I hadn't painted that stuff yet. Yeah, there you go. Go, go back one. There. Right there. Okay. You, you see how these hands form a cross. It's kind of cut, cut off at the top there, but you get the idea. So this hand here with the, uh, the, 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 the shirt that I have, uh, the dress that I haven't finished painting the pattern on yet, uh, on the right-hand side, her hand is leading you down directly into the leg at the bottom left-hand corner of this image. Okay. So this is where we want to be. Yeah, that heel there is... Oh, yeah, you're saying here, right? Yeah, yeah she's okay. basically pointing at the snake and yeah. looking at the snake. And, and then all, all of these four figures are, are looking down towards the, uh, the snake. But you also have this rather interesting cross going on, which I really like a lot. There's this, uh, this allusion to, uh, to Christianity, I think, there. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not particularly a Christian person, but, uh, but it's culturally been so significant that I want to point that out. Yeah. Of course, made by it is an allusion to Eden, right, in the Garden mm -hmm. That's cool, man. That's cool. Uh, and then you have, um, so if you had this here, you bring these nuances. Yep. That's cool. <laughs> I love her face. The whole painting is a great big So th then, then this is the, uh, the moment of conception, then. This is. Yeah, yeah in, in the pregnancy theme that's, that's there in the, uh, in the painting. Yeah. That's neat. So she gets lonely and she gets pregnant. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, in, in the whole, let me see here real quick. So walk us through that, that, that concept through the four panels. Um, right. So here, so she, in the winter, she she's the first, Yeah. Right. So there in the winter, she's, uh, she's alone. It, it's kind of gossipy. They're laughing at her. The, the, the figure on the left in the dark shirt that, uh, then, uh, then where are we then? Um, uh, then uh, spring, the second one from the right. Yeah, this one here. Uh, yeah, spring. That's where uh, her heel gets bitten. And uh, uh, but there's, there's also this sense of letting her hair down. The figure on the far left there is letting her hair down, and and uh, then the figure on the right is yep. holding flowers. I didn't want it all to be. Oh my God, she's been bitten by a horror. I want to. I want them to lead from one panel into the next. Uh, so then you go back over to the left here where it's summer and that's a great big party. They're having a great time with a couple of, of little secrets in there. Uh, the girl who's crouching down is reaching for a child, uh, as we mentioned earlier on. Mm -hmm. and the girl on the right hand side, I think you have a closer shot of that one, uh, of, of the figure uh, right there. Yeah. Oh, right here? Uh, um, yeah. Let me get over here. All right. 
Yeah, there you go. So the figure on the right in this image, uh, she's, uh, she's got a hand on her belly and um, mm -hmm. uh, she's got a finger to her mouth because she's got the secret. She's already ah. pregnant. <laughs> oh, okay. She's actually wearing the same dress. Another compositional trick is to find the similar thing, right? Mm -hmm. so this girl here is wearing the same, the same patterned dress as the one who's getting bitten by the snake. Uh, okay. And in the later panel, uh, in, um, when she's actually fully pregnant, uh, that'll be the same pattern. So I haven't painted that yet. Although, if I turn you around a little bit, oh, there we are. Uh, uh, hold on, right, let me. Uh... Uh, there, you can see over my shoulder right now, directly over my shoulder, you can see the beginning of the uh, uh, of the pregnant um, uh, girl there. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Look at you. you got pregnant be, girls uh, hanging on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> it's been amusing taking photos of these because uh, if I take a selfie, uh, then uh, these girls are sort of looking at me. <laughs> like, what are you trying to tell us, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> They're speaking to me. They're everywhere. That's all. Oh, well, you know. I'm having such a good time painting this painting. Nice. nice. Now, now, do you have any kids of your own? In, in... I do, yeah, three. Really? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, 30 year old Brittany. She's a. Uh, special needs uh, teacher and uh, Elizabeth and Ethan. Wow. Both 19 twins. In fact, really? In this painting, she's uh, standing right now upon my shoulder, on my, on my right shoulder, your left. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 uh, the women in the painting are, are all uh, repeated. Yeah. None of them are in there just once, I don't think. Uh, um, in this image here, for example, the woman who's crouching down to chase that kid and the one who's holding the knife in the bowl, uh, they're both the same model. Oh, okay. And the, then the, the one on the right who's whispering the secret, and she's in the painting um, uh, three times, I think. Uh, and then uh, in the winter one, there's only two, two women in that painting at all. Mm-hmm. Repeated. You just repeat it, yeah. Great. Right. Right. Makes they sense. come in and, and they... They wore many, many sundresses, and we had all the. I, I made these uh, flower garlands and flower uh, sort of uh, bracelet things, and, and uh, brought in props and wine glasses. That's cool, man. That's cool. <laughs> Drink up. No. Um, yeah, we didn't do any drinking at all. <laughs> okay, well, good. That's very wise. <laughs> um, the uh, and then you take you take you do a photo shoot. You take the photos, right? And then you. You lay them out in Photoshop, you were saying? Yeah, I use Photoshop extensively. Uh, I used to draw more, but these days I've, I don't draw very much at all anymore. I, I use photo reference for making my paintings and, and make these composite images now. Uh, and it's very efficient. I really like working like this. It's cool. Mm -hmm. so, so now, in a weird because uh, then you're compositing these images together. Yeah. And, then, and then what do you do? Do you then print it out and then draw it from that point onto the... Well, the images are so big, so I, I work from, I have a, a monitor that's uh, sort of turned sideways. It's a big monitor that's vertical and work from that. Oh, okay. So you, what is it called, sight and size or something? Yeah. It depends on the painting. If it's something enormous, then I'll project it up and use a projected image and, and just draw out the outlines, which saves you a lot of time in doing the drawing, uh, and it's, it's quite efficient. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's a smaller piece, I like to grid things uh, and, uh, and work from, uh, from a, a transferring a grid drawing over. But I don't see the point of it, something enormous. It's, why, why do that to yourself? <laughs> you know, one of the techniques we use is uh, we just send it off to... I'm getting older. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. I remember... Um... Hey, I've got maybe 20 or 30 years left, that's all. If I do four paintings a year... I'm counting the number of paintings I can. Oh make. my goodness! That's uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah I got any anything I can do to make this process faster. I'll do it. Indeed, indeed. Got to collapse the time, buddy. Got to collapse the time. Um, yeah. When I was reading uh, uh, the biography of Norman Rockwell, uh, he was talking about um, transferring. He, he would draw to scale, right? And then he would have to transfer his drawing to the canvas. And he said, you know, I used to try to hire people out to do it, but, you know, nobody really could just take the care that was necessary to, tr to transfer the, the, the lines properly. Um, and so uh, something I encourage the people at the academy to do is just, you know, use technology, you know, scan it in, send it off to the, to the printer, and they'll print it directly on the canvas for you, you know, and 
Oh, so actually, it's the point of being a Luddite. You know, why would you want to be a Luddite in these days? We have these amazing tools yeah. that we can use. It, and, you know, the outcome is still a, a thing on canvas that I've made. Yep. Uh, uh, I don't see any, any problem with this. I know some people do. The traditionalists would uh, <clears throat> really dislike my method of painting, I'm sure. I always tell them, well, if that's the case, then... I hope you're farming your own cotton for the canvas. <laughs> you're going out and mining your own, you know, ore for your paints, you know, because that's the traditional way, you know. Yeah, yeah but I admire <laughs> regard for the traditional way. You know, don't get me wrong. I admire traditionalists who, who really go to town with this. Uh, but it, it, I just don't, I don't have time for no. it. I, I can't do it. I, I can't spare the time. And, and I, I, I will cut corners if that's what it takes to make the image. I want the image to be strong. Exactly. So let me, from your experience, and what if they're not cutting those corners, right? That takes up time. Yeah. So something on that balance sheet is is you know is suffering. In your experience, what do you feel is suffering in in the art making process? If you an appearance uh, that that um, that you can't quite you can't quite get away from it. If you look at a, a traditional oil painting that's been made without any photographic aids, just from purely from observation, and, and I've done these paintings, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I know what I'm talking about here. Uh, they, they appear very differently to a painting that's, uh, that's been done uh, from photography. There's always a, a lens distortion or something. It's very subtle, but, but they, they feel different. Mm -hmm. and I, I, it's very difficult to put your finger on exactly what that is. So there is that price there, you know, that the, the image is going to be slightly different to the way it would be from direct observation. So, oh, so, so when you answered that question, you're actually saying that, like in, in your case, if you're using the, the photography, there's a slight distortion or slight something, whatever it is, that's a little off um, right. than the, the live model. Hmm. And you have to be careful of that. When, when I shoot, I'm very careful to be consistent in my lighting and the position of where I am, you know, my, my camera angle. I, I try to be as consistent as possible uh, in order to avoid that so that although there, there's lens distortion, at least it's consistent lens distortion yeah, yeah. around the image. You know, I, I, it's, it's strange. Um, I'll stare at a piece that I know... Um, reference like photography reference was used right and i'll stare at it and i'm looking for my eye to just begin to automatically shift i call it a glimpse and a lot of times it doesn't happen and it's because the photography takes like this still it, 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 creates, it creates like this still image that's frozen right. and then when you copy that that's what happens is it's frozen you know yeah. Now, if you're dealing with a model, they're going to naturally have these little tiny shifts. Yeah. You know, yeah. And then you but bring on the other hand, though, photography has this, this amazing ability of capturing the peak performance. You, you know the sculptor Richard McDonald? I was talking to him about this uh, a, a few months ago, and he, he likes to capture the peak performance, <laughs> the moment of the heightened activity of the, of the body. And that's very difficult to do with a live model. You have to have that model there for days working on it to do it over and over again. Uh, and um, and to 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 be a, a really great at capturing that that split second of peak, right? mm -hmm. and the camera can do that with more ease. And um, uh, I know what I'm looking for in the images. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I have a very very good idea of what I'm after, what I want the model to be doing. Uh, and so I'll 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 play tricks on them. I'll, I'll have them like pull faces and, and then suddenly get back into that moment that I'm actually looking for, right? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have them shake everything out and then suddenly get back into exactly the pose and repeat that over and over again until I get that sense of, of the peak, mm -hmm. uh, that, that moment of performance, which is what I'm looking for. That's uh, awesome. That, what's that? I said that, that's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah, it works pretty great. Uh, but you end up with thousands of photographs. <laughs> when, I, when I used to do... Uh, <laughs> when I was younger, I used to do caricatures, and um, and the the person would sit in the seat, and and the parents or whoever would be like smile, you know, and 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 they had this cheesy smile. Yeah. And I used to hate it. Kind of appearance, right? So I would just 
avoid that, in my opinion. You, you want to keep away from that, that frozenness. Game. Oh, my gosh, absolutely. So I, I, I learned a little trick, which was, which was to bore the hell out of them, right? <laughs> and, and, and they go like this, and I let them smile like that because it hurts after a while. And then I'd lean over, I'd be like, you don't have to smile like that. And, I, oh, and, and then, like, there was this moment, and I either that moment or if I just allow them to get bored for a second, they would just do this thing at some point where they would open their mouth a little bit and just, like, you know, and there it was. And I would, I would see it out of the corner of my eye, and then I'd, I'd capture that. And people like, oh, my gosh, it looks just like them, you know. Right. I was like, it doesn't look like them. It's a freaking mouth. caricature. Right. That's a really, really <laughs> important trick, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it emphasizes the line of the mouth and, and it makes it a deeper, darker uh, shape. Uh, if, if people are pursy lip, then you, you just don't get the character of the mouth. And the character of the mouth is so important. Yep. yep. It, just, it, just, it just turns it, it activates it, it animates it. Becomes, yeah, exactly. I'll have the flow of raspberries at me. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss me. <laughs> raspberries. That's funny. Right. Well, this is cool, man. Uh, I, I wish you the best in this, and um, and uh, and it'll be so exciting to see them. You know, I, I'm assuming you're, you do you post them on your Facebook as you're going through the yeah. process? Yeah, they, I, I post quite a lot on Facebook with the process, but I don't want to bore bore the hell out of everyone. You know, how it's many, true. How many <laughs> great pictures can you look at? You know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, I do have. Importantly, though, we we set up a Facebook page for when the tour starts. Because the tour is going to go around the southern states. It'll be in Oklahoma and then uh, Tennessee and Florida. It uh, <laughs> opens in June in, uh, in Ventura uh, in California. And it'll continue after that and uh, travel a bit more, sure. Cool, cool. Now, I see you have these little lines, these uh, lines. What are these lines uh, underneath, this, this gritting underneath? Uh, they're my guidelines, so I make sure I'm getting the figures in the right places. I want to be sure that when I'm painting them out, uh, that I'm, I'm placing things correctly. When you're working on a big painting like this, it's very important to maintain consistency. You can get yeah. lost very easily. Mm. And, and those, those are there for me to measure from and, and make sure I'm getting, uh, getting everything right. You, what you can't see is the lines that existed up here uh, along the, the heads there. Uh, and there, there were lines there as well and vertical lines too. I'll drop down vertical lines so I can get the proportion of the body right uh, from left to right. Okay. So, Kind of like a minimal grid for each figure, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's cool. And then, and then you have a, a similar grid on all of them, so that there's so the eye travels throughout them all, and there's not this weird. System. Yeah, that's yeah. cool, man. I want, I want in this piece, I want you to be within this journey, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I'm assuming then people would would walk, like turn as they're. Right, they'll be in the in the center of the installation, and yeah. so there's, there's no the, the the reason I like that, and the reason I, I wanted that is because there's no beginning and no ending to this. I want to emphasize the cyclical nature of this journey that you're always on this journey. It's it, it's it's tied with the sun and personal experience. And <laughs> Never end. Now this is not. The, now these will be within a rectangular room, so there's going to be four walls. Okay, okay, okay. So but people can the look at one. They're going to be curved. What was that? The, the wall, the interior will be curved. So they're actually on these walls that have a, a curved surface to. Them. Oh really? Yeah, okay. So it wraps around you in a circle. Ah, like a rotunda type of. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, that's that's cool, man. That's cool. I think so. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice. The Very nice nice. thing about it also is that in galleries that don't have enough wall space, you automatically you're creating four more walls and you can hang stuff on the reverse side of the walls, right? Yeah. Okay, true. Oh, so, so then the walls, you're, you actually are creating the walls because that's part of the installation. That's part right. of the problem. Ah, okay, nice, nice, nice. Very cool, dude. <laughs> that's like cool. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, so do, do your kids, are they into uh, the arts as well? Uh, well, you know, you try, don't you? <laughs> but uh, no, neither of them particularly into it. I, it. My son really draws beautifully. He got into doing anime uh, mm. drawings, and uh, he has an Instagram account. He posts these things on there. Uh, and my daughter, too, has a lot of ability, but she's going into medical stuff. And, uh, well, that's normal. Career in art at all. So, you know, but they're 19. They've got plenty of time to figure it out. Yeah. About what they want to do with themselves. Yeah. I, I, I know a lot of doctors who wanted to go to school for art 
but they yeah. made the intelligent decision. <laughs> and then I also know some artists who went to medical school and thought, you know what, I need it. You know, and it's I always, it's kind of funny. I, I, I had a conversation the other day on Facebook with this lady and, and, and she's like, oh yeah, all kids are artists, you know, because, oh. so, because, <laughs> um, you know, there's the idea that if you can create an image, if you can make make an image, you can make something that somebody can see, well, then you're an artist, right? And so I think this is a, a myth that's uh, come from John Dewey and the education reform of the, <laughs> the 20th century. It's <laughs> artist therapy. It's not true. Not no. even an artist. Being an artist is brutal. <laughs> it's Indeed. A horrible, horrible way to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that might be taken the wrong way it's a wonderful way to make a living if you can figure out how to make it work for you if you yeah, exactly i mean you gotta be you gotta be a warrior to be an artist yeah, and you, you it, it takes a very particular kind of person to be able to pull it off. and that's what i i i love educating people in is you know i i call us the modern day shamans right and um because you know <laughs> I, I, I challenge people. I'm like, go go back in the days when they had like paint, you know, like the Renaissance or whatever, and try to find like the Painters Guild. And right. You can't, you know, because they they the, the, the they were in the medical guild, and because um, they had to know anatomy and chemistry and biology and botany and all, like everything else, right? So they were highly intelligent people, and and nowadays we have this um, this idea that you know. They're starving, they're insane, they're crazy, they're, you know, they're just this low type of being in society. And and, um, and one of my hopes through doing interviews like this and introducing people to uh, to thinking artists that uh, we we get to kind of crush that 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 myth. And um, so Mike, I thank you for your time. Um, and uh, this was this was cool, dude. This was really really cool. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure doing it. I hope it's uh, it's useful to people. It, it will be. It will be. So I'll, I'll go ahead and post it then tomorrow um, for our Friday. Uh, usually I post them on Fridays, and uh, and do get an interview with Bill. He's he's a far better interviewer than I. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. I enjoyed myself. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. I I, I kind of learning from him a little bit and. Um, but but he's a great interviewer, and you have a great time with him, and uh, and he'll get more basically into your story. Where we talked about the artwork, so um, it'll be cool, All right, man? All right, dude. Have a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.